Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. So, in this episode, I plan on going to fight Noomnok the Devourer. So that's going to be our main goal, but we do have other things we need to do as well. House of Dead Respec, Edar. Edar is now yes. a little more yes. prone to escape if he does get cornered. But to give him the escape ability. And also, I did get the biggest boat, so we do have the Certainly. the biggest boat available, which is the Junk. And actually, I need to rename it. Let's name it uh, Mighty Junk, which I feel is appropriate. And I do have a full crew, so we are actually maxed out on our boat. All I need to do is get the, the cabins, and then I will be completely done with my boat. And they are fully stocked and ready to go. I uh, probably need some more supplies, but we'll get that later. So that's going to be it. Let's head on out to the sea. Alright, so we do have to go to uh, Fort Deadlight and turn in some quests there. And we also have the quest for the Steel Preacher, which is in that same area. I think everything else is done over here. Let's go on and take care of the Steel Preacher first. And then we will head to Fort Deadlight. And after that, we'll work our way up towards Noomnok the Devourer. Alright, here is the Steel Preacher. We do need to be careful with this storm right here. We do not want to get caught in this, especially when we're on a boat. We should be a, in a pretty straightforward fight. So nobody looks like they're over our levels. We just need to get our tank in there. Alright, let's just go ahead and engage and then let our tank get all the aggro. And we can cast Sworn Enemy. And then everybody else can probably get on some of these uh, champion. No, let's get on the Fanatics. Yeah, and so Edgar, he, he actually has the ability to uh, sprint now. I'm going to sprint towards this guy. Let's have Edgar go on this guy. He actually does quite a bit of damage now, too. Yeah, I don't want my healer back here. I don't want him to get stuck back here. Now that we're going to fight bigger groups, I do have Charm or Sleep that can help me with uh, larger groups. Oh, I think we drew the attention of one of these flame metal medals. Yes. Let's get people back here to attack him, kill him, and then we can move on to the next guy. All right, who's next? This thing isn't doing the job. Oh, my tank is not staying on this guy. Okay, let me make sure that he stays on him. Yeah, this is just about over. Okay, so I'm just gonna probably fast forward to this because. They're about dead. There's only three left. Alright, Steel Preacher is dead. Let's gather up our loot. Oh, okay, we get some nice gloves. Uh, bolt catchers. Yeah, nothing else to be too special. We do get some bombs, which is nice. Everything else will be just normal equipment. Alright, so let's go head on over to Captain LD's. Who is in for Deadlight? All right, here she is. Odd. I seem to be missing a cask of my favorite rum. Okay. Well, what can I do, you lovesome? I thought you'd like to know I helped Mad Morena in the Undercroft. It's actually a long time ago I did that. So I heard. And so I'm impressed. I like when someone does me and mine a favor. Makes me feel real friendly towards them, you know? And I like to give my friends little tokens of my appreciation, like this. All right. Expect me to be in touch, if or when I need you. Elsewise, do come to see me should you happen to uncover any particularly juicy tidbits regarding Ferrante's political schemes. What did you want to meet me about? Well, I had planned to ask you for a favor. One that would strike a blow to the slave trade at Crookspur. But it would seem I'm rather too late. Aye, and quite a raucous it was from what I've heard. I always like a good bloodbath myself. Some of the freed slaves have already made it here to Deadlight and pledged to ships in my fleet. 
You did a fine thing, Captain. Don't think I'll soon forget it. She rubs her thumb over the swollen net around her neck, miscolored eyes looking you up and down. Her lips quirk in a sly smile. Oh, we did get some ma uh, major positive reputation with the Principe San Petrina. You're real good for business. So, here's to hoping our wakes cross again someday. And we do get uh, Black Blade's hood. Until then, you can trust that I'll be in touch when I need you. She tips her hat obligingly, then downs a goblet of godkiller rum that has been sitting on the desk behind her. About Ferrante. Got something for me, Dove? She leans forward with interest, the corner of her lips curving wickedly. I'm all ears. It was Ferrante who told me where to find Benwith. I figured as much. That's how Ferrante gained his political standing. And that's how he keeps it. With underhanded tactics that whittle his opponents into ruin. Me? I prefer to face my foes head on. Give them the chance to join me before I fucking annihilate them. The captain's miscolored eyes light with mischief. And I like to reward those who support me. I'm good to my allies, you see. For your troubles, Dove, let me share with you a little of my treasure. Uh, Ferrante asked me to search Nekataka for information on the floating hangman. Nekataka? But why there, Lovesome? Aldis crossed her arms beneath her breasts. Well, go on then. I'm sure you've heard our saying. Share and share, as is the law of the coast. After Lucia Riven was slain by a Barithian priest, she rose as a death guard. Explains how she's captain of an undead crew. That also tells me, if she's a death guard, then there'll be something she's wanting most fierce. Something she may be willing to bargain for. This bit of knowledge is something I can assuredly work with. I always did like untangling the threads of history. It's like puzzling out an encoded treasure map. Only to reap these spoils, we've to uncover the mysteries of the past. Give me time, and I'll find the means to deal with Lucia. Then we'll be one fathom closer to commandeering the floating hangman. The captain hands you a weighty sack of coins, and at the same time signals a nearby sailor to bring her a series of nautical charts. Clearly, she's eager to begin her hunt. Uh, apparently, an old Dracozy paladin, Lucia Riven, commands the floating hangman. The floating hangman is the remains of the Fonferus. Interesting. Quite very interesting. I had heard rumors as to such. The floating hangman flies a flag featuring the burning palace from Old Valia. Already lost in thought, Aldiz gives you an absent nod and some coins. And finally, Ferrante's interest in Crooksburg's slave trade involves the Valayan Trading Company. Well, well. Ain't that a fine thing to know. It makes sense for certain. Her eyes narrow. Aiding the slavers is small fry for a captain like Ferrante. It wouldn't pay well enough to be worth the investment. If you've evidence of his involvement, keep it close. We may be able to use it to our benefit later. Oh, ah, you've brought me a juicy tidbit this time. Now I'll be after it like a shark on a blood trail. With a pleased expression, she tosses you a small sack of coins. That's pretty much it. As you wish, Dove. I am happily and wholeheartedly at your disposal. At least until I get bored. She winks her icy blue eye. Farewell. Okay, so that's a good uh, thing to do is come back here and get some money from her. And take some stuff from her too. Might as well, alright. Also some something here as well. Yeah. Hmm? It's not stealing, it's just borrowing. All Even right, more stuff over here. What's in there. See what we found. I need to come oh, back here more often. Alright. So the next thing we're going to do is head up to Junvik Village. Well, that's, that's not yes, necessary. <laughs> and then we'll uh, also go into the New Nocta Devourer quest line. And we also need to go there. As that's where our treasure map leads us to. The treasure map that we got from those bounties in Dunnage. 
All right, so to get to Junvik Village, it's actually way, way up here. Um, we have to go up here. And also, this is the same area we need to go in order to complete the uh, mapping quests that we have currently. So I don't see any storms in the way. Well, actually, there's one storm here. Let's just be mindful of that. Let's head this way. All right, so this is uh, the area where Junvik Village is. I'm just going to grab some of this stuff here around this island. Some supplies. Definitely need those. I didn't resup resupply since I bought this big boat. So we have more capacity now. Right, let's check the shipwreck. Let's see what they have here. Okay, nothing really of interest. So this is um, the treasure map. Let's uh, head here. The area seems unremarkable, but for a set of large rocks placed in a triangular formation. You compare the desert pass with the notations and landmarks of Captain Hanqua's map. This is the site of the buried treasure. You dig at the spot until you, your shovel hits a bag of coins. Bursting at the seams, kneeling to gather up armloads of riches, you spot the corner of a buried chest. You dig faster and pry open the chest. A fortune in jewels and goods sparkle in the light. Okay, so we get some various um, types of gems, and we also get some uh, some of these golden swells. Not a whole lot of money really here, or like a thousand. We also get a Magnaris chain, which is an armor. So, definitely an added bonus to being up here. And this is the map we got when we did the bounties for the Lady in Dunnage. She was uh, asked us to kill four different people, and we did. And each one of those dropped a map fragment, and then we put them all together, and we get this map with this quest on it to take us up here. And so while we're here, let's, let's go to Junvik Village. I said no to talk. The drowned barrows are closed. An elderly dwarf folds her arms, disapproving frown, warping the tattoos that circle her face. If you want to join your son, you can offer yourself to Nemnok next season. What's going on? An outlander. Tatak goes starry-eyed with awe, but a hard look from Anik silences him. This is Junvik business, none of yours. She turns her nose up at you. Our elders crossed the land bridge to protect their children. You disgrace their memory feeding our young to the mountain Anik. The auburn bearded dwarf waves toward the imposing peak on the horizon, its cliff face shaped like a leering skull. Nemnok will release my son, or, or perish. Tatak utters the words in a hate filled whisper that causes Anik to hiss through her teeth. What happened to your son? Kali sacrificed himself for the good of the tribe, right, Tatok? Ah. Uh, I lived a full life in the shadow of the Barrows. Kali deserves the same. If you reject Nemnok's accord, then you are truly lost. May Kali find peace in the embrace of the Mighty One. Anik grits her teeth and marches across the settlement, turning her gaze to linger on the distant outline of the mountain. Alright, so we do uh, have to go talk to this guy here, Tatak. And there's not much to do here, really. There's just a vendor over here somewhere. There's also a dog. We can get the dog. You want me to do what? So the dog is uh, this one, Ulk. Uh, plus one might. That's a really good pet. 5% of incoming hits converted to grazes from weapons. So, that's uh, actually a pretty good one. I think we have plus one might and we have reflex. It's still pretty good. If you do have the uh, bonus with Edar where you can have two pets, then it's actually worth getting uh, this one for your group. Indeed. I'm going to grab this stuff here real quick and then we'll talk to uh, Tatak. Must have leaked through Anik's skull if she thinks I'll stand idly by. 
Kaitok mutters to himself as he presses a fine chisel into the scale of his armor, engraving runes one laborious curve at a time. Uh, let's clear our throat. The chisel goes askew and draws a harsh line across the iron. Kaitok's eye twitches. Ah, there goes the rest of my day. What do you want, Outlander? Sparing you a glance, Tatak begins to furiously buff the metal with the edge of his fist. What was that argument about? Our chieftain offered my colleague to the drowned barrows. Tatak spits on his armor and rubs harder at the chisel mark. Nimnok accepted him. An honor to some, a tragedy to me. Tatak sighs and wipes his brow with the back of his hand. What's Nimnok? God of the island, a great terror of a being, but kind to us when we follow the rules. He shakes his chisel at the stone idol in the center of the village. His likeness is the most any of us have seen. We only meet his ogre minions who guard the isle. The children we send, they face him in the mountain. He nods towards the northern horizon. Uh, I could keep an eye out for a Kali. Tatok's eyes widen and his chisel falls from his hand. He raises a shaking hand to pull on the ends of his beard. You do that? Being an outlander, I suppose you aren't bound by our ways. We're talking about a missing kid, Tatok. Your kid. The riches of a god's sanctum await any who ventures in the barrows, but I just want Kali back. Next time it'll be Nemnok who pays. Tychok chews his lower lip and sighs as he marches toward this hut. Yes. Okay, so that's uh, pretty much it. So we do have the quest now, which is uh, Nemnok the Devourer request, with a journey to the drowned burrows after I take some stuff from them. Nothing really worth any value. Let's head north. Alright, so this is uh, the Drown Barrows here. You can only get here if you actually go through Junvik Village. A mountain commands the northern horizon, its cliff face the likeness of a rotted skull. Scavenger birds a circle high above its peak in a morbid halo. As you approach the base of the mountain, the beating of drums reverberates from the skull's gaping mouth and a vacant eye sockets. Let's step through the mouth. The overhanging jaw and upper palate eclipse the sky. An echo of voices from the throat of the mountain signal that you aren't alone. Looks like a skull, big evil monster statue at the entrance. I've got a good feeling about this. All right, so we have made it to the drowned burrows. Uh, so let's uh, stealth and let's see what we got up ahead. Like a nice little group here. A warlock, and we have some ogres here. Alright, let's get these ogres up here. Let's make sure we concentrate our fire on the casters first. We can get our summons down to draw some aggro. Edar can go over here in this warlock. So can you. Alright, let's get these guys to go around the back. On this guy. Let's do this. Alright, everybody should be on these guys. We'll be fine. There we go. Our tank should be okay by himself, tanking these guys. This guy's on automatic. Oh boy, what is going on here? Whoa. That is not something we want to ever have happen again. Something I can do. Yeah, let's do this. Okay, good. That was uh, pretty scary. I need to be careful next time with that. Alright, we can switch our ranged up on this guy here. Something I can do. That guy's dead. Now let's get Edar. You can go this way. Let's get Edar on this guy here. 
I've got it now. Some good thinking. We can just knock him down, keep him from casting too much. Edder's pretty tough, actually. At this point in the game, I feel pretty confident that he can one on one anybody. It's only when he aggroes large groups that I get concerned. I think it's pretty stable now. We have our tank grabbing the three ogres. We have um, Edor up top killing the casters. We have our group at the bottom that's three on one. This other fighter they have. Everybody is here. Yeah, we should be a real good spot now. Alright, we're down to the last guy and he's very close to dying. And there he goes. So, this uh, this fight wasn't too bad, actually. Uh, it was pretty smooth, since we got everybody from running around, and we kind of focus-fired on a lot of the casters early on. So let's grab out the loot, and let's move on. So the next place is going to be... Uh, this group's going to be around the corner here. We could go through here if we wanted to. I think there's like three big groups in this uh, zone, maybe four. Okay, so we do have a warlock, and we have some uh, guards here, and a bunch of just regular people here. Guards, warlocks. Okay, and then these anim these uh, two constructs will activate here. So let's uh, let's attack. Uh, this uh, guy here. I'm here. I'd be glad to. Let's drop our summons right here. Let's make sure we don't draw aggro too soon. Alright, so we can have our summons focus on the warlock here, which will damage him and keep him preoccupied for a while. Get the form of Delum gone on our tank. We got spider webs down. I think I can jump over there though. Oh yeah, it's better. Oh my uh, summons are mind controlled. At least they're stuck as well. I'm just gonna move out of his range. Let's turn this down a little bit. I just want to make sure I have a couple of things available. I'm gonna blind everybody here. Paralyzed, okay. What can I do? I'm uh I'm blinded too. Oh, I'm confused. Okay. Let's just resummon so that they're not mind controlled anymore. Let's make sure everybody's healed up. What can I do? There we go. Now we can get on these guys. I think we're in a pretty good spot now. We only have a couple of casters up and everyone else is being tanked fairly well. Okay, so, uh, yeah, these contracts are such a pain to kill. I need to just keep debuffing them and make sure they go down. They don't do that much damage. Especially with all the healing we have. But, yeah, he's, uh, just about dead. There we go. Alright, we didn't lose anybody. Um. Oh, did I level up? Oh, I did level up. Okay, there we go. I was wondering why that popped up. So you do get some information about this uh, weapon. You get some, just like a story about the gun and how it came to be, which is pretty nice. Uh, I need to do corrode damage now. Yes. So I did do uh, quite a few dexterity uh, afflictions, like so making them prone is dexterity affliction. Pretty much a lot of things are dexterity afflictions. 
Okay, let's get this last chest here. Let's uh, get ready to go. Uh, we can go upstairs or we can go around the corner. I'm going to around the corner. Alright, so let's go over here. And if you go through this door, this is where um, Numak the Devourer is. You can come over here though. There is a uh, hallway you can go down. And a bunch of Naga in this room that you can fight if you feel like it. Um, if you were behind on levels at this point in the game, like if you weren't level 18, at least, I'd recommend going in here and killing some Naga. But we are actually ahead of the game right now, so you need to go and take out these two Seedles of Death. And also a bunch of traps in this room, so let's do that. Get started with this. It's just so much faster to use her, her casting. What else do we have that we can use? This might work too. Ugh, I'm no help here. Ah, and rough. There goes one. Ah, and rough. Ah, and rough. Yeah, we'll just keep uh, hitting it with stuff until we break. Okay, that's pretty simple. Then uh, Edar needs to go in here, and so does our hunter. She has a high perception. If you can't find traps in here, that's a, a bad thing, because this, these traps are pretty high level. Yes. I'll show you right now. Like, she has really high perception. She has to go like right on top of them to actually yeah. find them. Should be a, like one or two more. Oh yeah, you can even hover over them, and that's funny. Yeah, there's one right there. What if that's a bug? I'm not gonna, I'm gonna uh, uh, see it first. There we go. Yeah. Hmm? All right, and then you have to go through here. There we go. This is it. Right here is uh, the Nemnok area. We lay down our lives before your magnificence. You are the key. I'm gonna take uh, something though before I start. I do want to take a potion, which is gonna be. Uh, let's do. Let's do this one right here. Or of allure. All right. The stem of the rose, the jewel in the pommel. You are the branches lower. and the roots. And let's uh, switch out this again. I want to make sure I have the right book on me. Uh, I think this is it. Yeah, Lich's Grimoire. Okay. But that's with stun bombs. Uh, they do do very much damage. Have better bombs, right? Uh, we do have concussion bombs. Let's do those. We do a lot of damage. All right, so we should be good to go now. Let's reveal ourselves. The fertile soil. What's this? Who trespasses on our devotions? Yakalak's voice echoes across the hall. A resounding chant from the worshippers continue uninterrupted. Nem -nock, nem -nock. You've taken your last step in the Master's Sanctum, Outlander. Nemnok will suck the marrow from your soul. A delighted call rises from the congregation as they redouble their chant. Is that you, Kali? I met your father. M my... My father is a disbeliever. I have risen above him. Kali balls his fist at his sides and turns to look away. Nemnok is the All-Devourer. The one who swallows gods and vomits forth their skulls. The one true power of Aora. Let me show you. See for yourself. Spreading his arms wide, Kali begins an incantation under his breath. Many of the supplicants mirror the gesture. The beating of drums increases in tempo. Then Kali draws a long dagger from his robe. 
Don't do anything foolish now. He draws the blade across the palm and hisses through clenched teeth. Leaning over the mouth of the pit, Kali lets his blood drip down. A hot breeze gusts from somewhere far below. Nemnok, Nemnok, Nemnok. I hope this Nemnok knows to bring bandages. Silence! Kali grimaces and redoubles his prayers with more fervent conviction. Nemnok, you are the gaping maw, the lidless eye, the shadow between stars. You are the red curtain, the secret in amber, the light of the Audra. He squeezes his hand into a fist, forcing more blood to drip from his wound as he feeds the void of the pit. Nemnok, 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 Nemnok. Chant Nemnok, Nemnok. Overjoyed, Kelly raises the dagger and draws another deep line down his palm. He throws his head back and roars with laughter. Nemnok, Nemnok, ne Beloved Nemnok, come forth and let all non-believers wither before your killing stare. Kelly holds out his arms. The air of the pit roars like an approaching inferno. Yes, yes, Nemnok comes. Uh, I don't like where this is headed. The chant of the Acolytes rises to a fever pitch as an enormous form rises from the pit and flaps its leathery wings. A pair of eyes, like cut gems, narrow to study you. What are you, fiend? The creature opens its jaw to issue a loud screech, sending Acolytes scrambling to bow and flurries of dust to fall from above. What have you brought me, supplicant? It gestures with an open claw, focusing on Kali. Sacrifices, mighty Nemnok. Behold! Kelly gestures towards your party. The worshippers around the circle raise their hands and cheer. Uh, I like the cheering, but some of what he's saying makes me a little nervous. Uh, I did not come to fight, Nemnok. Let's talk. Ha! The mighty one has no need for idle chatter. Do not waste your breath, Acolyte. I sense this one serves another master. Nemnok waves Kelly aside and glares at you with hateful intensity as worshippers take up their chant anew. Nemnok, Nemnok, Nemnok. I am the only master under this mountain, child. If you will not serve, your blood will fill the inkwells of my loyal scribes. Nemnok's toothy grin broadens, eliciting a cry of joy from the worshippers. You look like a giant imp to me. You have seen more of the world than I guessed, but I am more than your studious eye could perceive. Every scroll and grimoire my servants collect swells my power, child. Nemnok spreads his arms. The supplicants mirror the gesture. And with power, I will reign a terror long overdue on all who resist me. You're still just a giant imp. I... Mighty One? Kelly turns to regard Nemnok with wide eyes. Is your faith so brittle that it can be challenged by an outlander? Nemnok's eye narrows further. Its massive head shakes with disapproval. Through knowledge, I am stronger than any mortal. Submit to me, child. Resist and you shall perish. What are your terms of surrender? Terms? Nemlot blinks at you. My covenant is this. Gather grimoires of power from beyond the mountain. Return them to me as a sign of your devotion. Do this knowing at all times that I am your god. Fortune and glory await loyal service. Fortune and glory? In that case, I surrender to the mutually beneficial arrangement. Looking at you, Nimnox nods slowly. Then the compact is sealed. The Covenant Forged. Welcome, Acolyte. Its gaze swivels over at Kelly. I have exhausted my need of you, child. This one will serve me better. Kelly, go home to your father. This wasn't supposed to... You've ruined everything! 
Leave this place, but carry me always within your heart, child. Limnock raises a claw and lowers it as he turns from Kelly. Kelly marches out, breaking into a loud sob that echoes in the chamber. My child, our covenant is one bound in loyal service. Are you prepared? Tell me what you require, Nemnok. With a brief muttering and a wave of a claw, an inkwell and sheet of parchment materialize out of nowhere. Nemnok dips one long index talon in the ink and begins to write in long, swooping scribbles. Simple instructions for simple minds. Return with the books I outlined and you may choose your reward from the pile. Nemnok gestures over to the chest at the foot of the massive statue. With a snap of its talon, the parchment materializes in your hand. Now go. Waste no more of my time. How many imps do you think you had to eat to get that big? The great imp snorts and glares at Edar with suspicion but does not seem to have overheard him. Okay, so we did pick up another quest given to us by Nemnok, and it does require us to gather some grimoires, which I actually do have one of those already. But we can turn that one in later, that's, that's okay. So we did do what we came here to do, which was free Kali, and we also have the ability to uh, turn in the quest and get some stuff out of his chest here. Um, we could also loot the chests in front of him and steal the stuff, which will aggro everybody. Which will definitely cause us to fight him as well. And you can turn him into your pet if you win and beat him. Those are all options. So right now I'm going to level up and then let's go to Junvik Village and finish this quest. Alright, I am back and everyone is leveled up. So let's go talk to Tatak. My son returns! The barrow spat him out! Titok grins and slaps his son's shoulder. Father. Kelly winces and eases away. I'm happy to help. Whatever Anik says, you are welcome among the Judvik. First he tosses you a pouch of coins. Then he grunts and shrugs off his armor, passing it to you with pride. Alright, so we do get an armor and we do get some uh, coin and some quest experience, which is really good actually. And we do also get the achievement of Numnok the Devourer questline being completed, which gives us more points to spend in Bareth's blessings. The plate was meant for Kali, but I see now he has no taste for it. He's a priest in training, my boy. He winks at Kali, who shuffles awkwardly to the side. Alright, that's going to be it for this episode. I do have to level up our healer, which I will do in between the episodes. So let me know what you thought in the comments. And I thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.